Hi, it's Lindenherz. So before I will take you to the long promised uh, spiritual bookshelf tour, um, I thought I share with you one of my favorite beverages at the moment, a uh, seasonal beverage, perfect for the Yuletide. And um, I'm quite sure that um, you will some find some replacements because things that I will share with you here are, of course, specifically German. Um, but I'm quite sure you find some uh, uh, yeah, replacements for it. Um, as you can see, I'm using milk for it. Um, part is hot water and part is milk. You can, if you're a vegan, um, you can also use almond milk. I um, tried it with that. I'm quite sure that vanilla soy milk will also work or something like that. With the other ones, I'm not sure, so you have to test that. But um, with that, I will use milk. Um, but as you see, this is um, not mm, usual cream or something. This is vegan cream because I am testing that out for our... Um, um, we have, uh, yeah, a cooking, uh, some kind of uh, um, thing that is part of the Transition Town movement. And we uh, cook... Um, um, every second week in the month um, in Egon's Villa. Maybe some of you know uh, that I talked about that before, which is um, yeah, a place where you can come, where you can read books. We have an alternative library there. Uh, we also have a little sacred space there. And um, yeah, um, twice a month we are cooking there and um, we mostly cook there vegan. And I'm always searching for some things to add, maybe uh, some treats after the, the main meal, the main course. And uh, this time I tested here this vegan um, cream. We call it Sprühsahne, <laughs> um, but it's vegan way, uh, the, in a vegan way. And I guess it's based on, is it based on soy? I'm not quite sure. I'm not sure. This is not standing here, but I guess you will find some replacement. Sorry if, if I wobble at the camera here. But what I will use here is, um, for instance, this here. So I can put that back here. Um, this is, uh, we call that, okay, here it says Land Café. This is um, coffee without caffeine because it's based on... Um, Grain, you could say. We think this is barley and malt and something and rye. So it's an alternative for those of you who can't stand uh, co coffee or coffee. I'm not quite sure how to pronounce that. Um, I can't stand that. I have uh, really difficulties with that. So um, I use this one. And I'm using for this one, I will use just a tablespoon. Maybe it depends on uh, the largeness of your mug. So I'm using my witchy mug here. Um, you can use one tablespoon at least per cup. Um, sometimes I add a little bit more. But what I will add now is um, cacao. We call it cacao. I still don't know how to pronounce that in English. Uh, cocoa? I'm not quite sure. So... Um, I'm using that. This is unsweetened one, so really pure uh, uh, cocoa or cacao. <laughs> and I use, yeah, it depends how much you want uh, in your um, in your cup and how chocolatey you want it to be. I like it very chocolatey, so I put in a little bit more. And what I'm using now here is, um, it's called coffee spice. But this is um, a spice mix that you can use for all sorts of uh, Christmas or Yule-like uh, treats. Because it, it contains most of the things that you find there. So you find uh, cinnamon, you find cloves, you find vanilla powder, uh, ginger, and so on and so forth. This will focus, but I guess you won't be able to read it only the... Uh, the people from Germany will uh, will do that or can do that. But here on the side, this is by the brand is called Sonnentor. And they do all sorts of spices and also tea blends. And the tea blends are mwah, so the best uh, organic tea blends. And here you can see 
or read some more of this. Old knowledge and new ideas from the fertile soil of our device range of natural delights. Since 1988, delicious products have been growing under our laughing sun logo. Each and every one reflects our respect for manual work and our appreciation of people and nature. But jo joy grows. And there's even a dot .com um, website. I guess you can translate or you can switch to English or something. And this is actually for coffee. Uh, uh, it was initially for coffee. So you have this kind of, um, you call this very, not very strong, but this more oriental coffee um, mocha. And they mostly spiced. And mocha is one of the few things, funnily, that I'm quite okay with uh, drinking. A, a little bit, at least. So here you can put, I would suggest, just a bit. If you're more into Christmas uh, spices, you can do more. But I will do this amount of, put it back. And then what I will add is half, half of the cup is uh, filled with hot water. And you have to immediately have to switch that a little bit. Immediately try to blend it in. After the half of hot water, you still stir it a bit because uh, especially the cacao has to uh, resolve smoothly. Otherwise, you have these kind of uh, powdery stuff flowing in at the top. I will add a little bit more water. And then you add some milk to that, or you fill it the rest with milk. Ah, oh, something I have forgotten, totally. This is better when you do it hot. I sometimes use honey to sweeten it, and this is, oh my gosh, I try to blend it in, uh, or to, to put it in now here in the in the part here, um, what this is. We call it Zuckerrüben. This is, um, I try to remember how to call Rüben. Uh, I'm not quite sure. Um, so this is made from sugar uh, um, roots. You could say something like a sugar root it is. Um, and you made, uh, you can make syrup uh, from it and um, you can use it in sauces and you can use it also on top of your uh, bread or buttered bread or something or for baking and sometimes you can also use it for this. It is a bit, um, uh, in taste it's a bit more um, more rich, it's not only sweet, there are more texture to it and more um, nuances that you find in that and I love it. When I was a child I wasn't fond of it, my mom was fond of it and uh, she ate it for breakfast uh, on uh, on bread with cream cheese and then on top she put that and it was always a little bit of a mess and now I like that very much. Uh, I actually uh, I'm eating uh, in the morning something with uh, something like a, I'm not quite sure bun is Brötchen called bun something we call it toasties not not necessarily Brötchen or buns um, but some stuff that you put in the, your toaster. And um, I add some bananas on top and uh, this one and a little bit of walnuts, which I love to eat in the morning. And uh, usually I get accompanied by my dog because she is quite a banana lover and I never be able to eat uh, <laughs> my bananas alone because she's always there and demands her a part of the, uh, the deal, so to speak. And what you can do now is top that with if you want. What I found out with this vegan mm, vegan cream that you can spray on is that it dissolves, at least I think, it dissolves much faster into the hot um, um, yeah, hot drink than a uh, normal uh, cream would do. So what you could do is a bit different to make that look pretty. So, 
And I have to say, I don't always use this one on top. Most of the time, I'm using uh, nothing on top, so just the drink. But if you want to have it like this, you can sprinkle it with a little bit of cinnamon and even more of this cacao powder here, um, or what you like. A little bit of spiciness bring on top or something. I would uh, think that this could be also working quite well with a bit of uh, a tiny bit of chili or something, chili powder, bring it more spiciness into that. So, uh, without further ado, we will switch now to the book tour. So back again, and you can see there's some messiness going on there on top. This is something which is quite usual for me, and you can see here in the. Uh, there is also some stuff on it. Sometimes I also <laughs> have these here hanging. This is one of the few, or I didn't make that much this year, and I'm not quite an expert about making these kind of bundles. But this was one that I have created from our hikes in the Harz Mountains, which is uh, a little bit south from where I live in North Germany. And this is, uh, yeah... Um, this was a park and this is made from actually from cedar and uh, yeah actually only from cedar if I remember correctly um, and it's um, it was smelling so good when you have fresh cedar red cedar actually from the redwoods actually um, they have an um, arboretum if you know what that is there planted there which we call the world forest the weltwald hearts um, and there you find uh, all sorts of trees from around uh, Northern America and also from Japan and something like that. Um, and they're quite growing well there. And um, sometimes I collect twigs that are falling down and um, they smell so, so, so good. So back to the book tour. So what you see, I'm mostly, I'm putting on books and decks and something to have more space because I'm living in a tiny space with much luck, with very much luck. I will be able um, to do a, a room tour or should I say a flat tour, maybe at the end of all my Flockmas videos. Not sure when that will be because we are still in the middle of, uh, yeah, optimizing our home so to speak and uh, most of the things that you can't see here on camera are a bit of a mess and uh, but this is something I wanted to do for a long time mm, and there are also new subscribers I think I have never shown the whole of my flat at least not the rest of the room here sometimes a bit other places or something but, but no uh, never ever uh, the whole uh, thing in total so this is something I want to share with you. But here we just start. This is a book that you already have seen. This is about the uh, Raunechte. I already have got a lot of questions about uh, these nights, these uh, special nights that starts after Christmas or after Yule. Traditionally, it starts um, after, uh, after Christmas. I'm not quite sure if I will start it on uh, the winter solstice or the, the night before the winter solstice or something. I know that it normally starts, um, like I said, even uh, uh, like I said before, was um, that it starts mm, the night before Christmas. So uh, uh, from the 24th to the 25th. Um, and this is a night where you, um, yeah, where you reflect upon the last year where you uh, burn a lot of incense um, and where you also uh, do oracles for the next year. So you draw basically um, oracles for the, the 12 coming months. This is a little bit um, something new, I would say. I'm not quite sure because in the area where I'm living, it's not a tradition. It's more a tradition in the south of Germany. and um, But I will get to that in another video. I really th uh, uh, thought that this might be a topic for a uh, uh, yeah, separate video because I think this could be maybe quite interesting for pagans out there maybe knowing uh, a little bit of the old traditions of Germany and uh, from what I know I will be a little bit share of, about this book. 
I think maybe I will get a new book. I'm not quite sure. I have seen or I have my eyes on one and I will see um, um, if I if I'm able to get it. Um, it's more from the feminine perspective on the uh, Raunechte. I, the, I really, I thought about how to, I know I'm using the German word for that. I really try to find a way how to um, capture that. And I would maybe say, maybe come to, to a word like mystical nights or mystic nights. But um, I'm not sure. Maybe I will stick to Raunechte. So more of that later. Another one, uh, another book that I got is, um, I tried to find the, uh, the, the English title. It's Everyday Alchemy by Cherry Gilchrist. And um, I was quite interested in alchemy this year. And uh, this is a course book, actually. And I think this would be even more, yeah, it would not be nicer when you do this not alone but maybe with a friend or with a little group or something. And there are exercises in it and um, um, you go through it in a way that is um, most nourishing and helps you also when you have, uh, um, yeah, helps you find your soul goal, so to speak. This was a term that um, uh, Daniela from My Tarot 3 and I used for the... Um, for the triple goddess challenge we did on Instagram um, in October. And uh, a little bit of alchemy went into that challenge as well. So I will put that aside. Of course, I have some Oracle decks in that. And this is, of course, the quite popular, most beloved goddess Oracle. And this uh, copy I got from my dear friend Ruth from Rainfire Dreaming. And I'm quite happy about that. I had the German copy, but this is a copy I passed on uh, uh, to a fellow goddess lover and um, hope that she will, uh, or hope that she works well with it or hope that she will get the most out of it. And this is really a, a wonderful deck. The art is gorgeous. The booklet is quite, whoopsie, some hair, oops. <laughs> the, uh, the artwork is quite stunning, and the words um, that um, that uh, Amy Sophia Marshinsky uh, wrote are sublime. There are really exercises in it, perfect, perfect, perfect little meditations and something like that. I uh, really adore that book, and I wish there would more of those kind of books about goddesses. Sometimes. Um, some goddess oracles lack a little bit of that, but, well, I'm happy to have that one. And here we have the <laughs> the Osho Zen Tarot um, guidebook in German. And can I say, a couple of days ago, you saw me unboxing the mini Osho Zen from this spiritual magazine I was showing and sharing. And should I say, I'm quite stunned by this deck now. I have got the bigger copy that I have that it was a gift from a friend. Um, and oh my gosh, um, I even put in back the the uh, images that were that I still don't like uh, in terms of the style. Uh, but I put them back and I said, okay, let's give it a go. And at the moment, this deck is on point. It started quite soft and gentle and uh, encouraging and so on. And then uh, at the moment, it's really calling me out. <laughs> and I guess that was also the reason I put it down in the first place, because I, at one point when I got it, it really was really extremely calling me out. And I was a little bit disturbed, let's say it like this. And um, yeah, but now I'm uh, starting to enjoy that deck and I'm quite happy about that. This is always wonderful when you have decks that you have thought maybe to pass on. This is a deck I wouldn't pass on because it was a gift. Um, and then suddenly the time is right and you discover it and it's uh, wonderful. So uh, more decks, even more decks. Here we have um, the Terror of the Crone. A wonderful, lovely back I found. Actually, I found this back. Um, not purchased. This was uh, in um, with other cards. Uh, yeah, I could say cards that were um, 
created by someone as a project. It was just a few cards and I saw uh, said, okay, they don't necessarily need a bag because they are so um, solid and so on. Uh, but I thought this would be perfect for my Terror of the Crown. And I guess I will do... Um, um a favorite video so my favorite for 2017 and decks that i got and how i worked with them and so on and so forth and this is for sure this will be part of it and also here is the um the mother piece tarot in it gorgeous bag that i got gifted and that was created by daniela from my tarot three whoops you couldn't see it here wonderful soft wool i would love to have a scarf out of that wool actually um yeah this is something that i sometimes do storing decks on top of uh, books <laughs> and uh here we have also a wonderful book about a female spirituality whoops but it's more than that this is the chalice and the blade by rian eisler um, which is quite uh, literally uh, literally translated into Kelch und Schwert. Kelch is chalice and blade is Schwert or sword. Um, and I like that a lot. It goes really deep into also into um, archaeology and uh, things that were found through history that are um, part of um, um, part of our female history, of her story, you should say. This is a term that I come across quite often, not his story, but her, her story. <laughs> and uh, this is also wonderful because it brings together the uh, the female and the male principle. So the this, we call it Kampf der Geschlechter here in Germany, or in German, uh, the fight of the gender or the fight of the sexes. I'm not quite sure how to translate that. So... Um, and this tr attempts or tries to find a way uh, how we can deal with each other, men and women, in a more uh, way, uh, in a better way, in a be way that is more um, uh, geared towards. I come, I come across the word partnerschaft, partnership. You could say that is more equal, so to speak. And I quite like that book. Another bit of the mother piece, actually, this is the book by Karen Vogel, or Vogel, Karen Vogel, we would say. And it's a great book for those of you who want to read the directions, because it, I tried to find it, it's, it's just don't look over the camera and don't see when it's not in focus. You can see the directions here, this is the German version of it, and um, I quite like that. Um, I have sometimes problems when the cards are switched or upside down or something because um, for some reason my brain is freezing then and I can't make sense to the card at all. And I started using pebbles or crystals or healing stones that I put in the direction the card is yeah, uh, coming out, so to speak. So I see what kind of subtle energies are going on. This is quite wonderful for that and I quite like it that way. But I would recommend this book, but I surely would recommend the larger book that I will share with you that is by Vicky Noble, which I'm having here. This is also the German one. And um, this is a larger one and um, in depth and just perfect for getting to know the um, the mother piece, getting, uh, but also getting into the female, female spirituality movement. She has a lot of background um knowledge and she brings in uh, that background knowledge into every major arcana card and also her meanings of them um her ways of seeing the cards are a little bit different than uh karen fogel but um nonetheless you will get the most out of both books i guess when you want to work with the deck when you uh, can stand the artwork because I know this artwork is not everyone's cup of tea actually is also not necessarily my cup of tea but for some reason I grow fond of it and it's um, it's this uh, simple style that has a more yeah fits more like uh, like cave paintings or something so this is one uh, really uh, one of the uh, decks that really surprised me this year and I think uh, uh, the Osho Zen is uh, one that just surprised me. Another book, one of the first um, things I got from my 
beloved Wendy Andrew, the wonderful pagan artist from the UK. And everyone who knows my channel knows that I have uh, yeah, a love affair with her art. And this was really probably the first thing I purchased from her. This is uh, Lula Moon Hair, A Magical Journey with a Goddess, written and illustrated by her, by um, Wendy Andrew. And it's a wonderful picture book. And um, I really suggest this is a book that you could read when you're pagan or a witch or something that you can read to your children and get them familiar um, with the Wheel of the Year in a wonderful poetic way and the images are oh, sorry but uh, I'm always um, I'm always um, touched by her ways of capturing the goddess and and nature and um, I'm simply stunned and um, yeah simply love her art simply simply love her art and I think I will uh, further collect even more by her. There is a calendar that is coming uh, to me uh, uh, shortly, I hope, very shortly, um, which is different than the um, la last calendars I got from her. I guess it's the fourth or the fifth calendar I'm getting from, by her or for, uh, from her for this year. So, um, but further, um, what can I share with you? One of the books, there is a mix of books, actually. So here we have a little, here. Okay, you could say this is not necessarily a, <laughs> not necessarily a spiritual book, but uh, it fitted there perfectly. And um, the theme still is a bit spiritual for me because, yeah, Totoro, Totoro. Everyone who knows Ghibli films will love Totoro. And this was a gift from a friend. This is a Japanese art book um, of Totoro, of the art of Totoro. And I really love, 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 love that film. And I love every single uh, Ghibli or Ghibli movie out there. They are so full of wisdom. And um, yeah, I really, I, I watch certain movies on, yeah, on a constant go, so to speak. So sometimes when I'm feeling down, when I need a little comfort or something, I rewatched them time after time after time. One of my, or two of the films that I rewatched lately, or yeah, it was two at the moment, they are changing. Uh, one was um, When Marnie Was There, which was one of the uh, last movies of Ghibli, which was not directed by um, Hayao Miyazaki, but was wonderful, wonderful story that was based on a, an English um, a children's story. But it's so poetic and wonderful and always when I'm coming to the end, I have to cry. Um, but in a good way, in a good and cleansing way, I have to cry. Um, the other movie is, um, I try to remember, Up From Poppy Hill, which was also not by directed by uh, Hayao Miyazaki. I guess uh, it was a di directed by his son, by Goro Miyazaki. And also a wonderful movie where you get a bit more into the everyday life of Japan, um, during the 50s or something short before the shortly before the uh, olympic games were and it's also wonderful powerful story and um one of the stories that i recently fell in love again with was uh, ponyo upon the cliff on the sea or something and not sure how the second title is uh, called about a little fish girl who fell uh, who falls in love uh, with a little boy and I'm really in love with uh, Ponyo's mother, who is a sea goddess, um, who is called Grandma Mare, and I love her. I adore her, adore her. But, um, except from that. So what you see here is Clarissa uh, Pinkola Estes, which we call in German Die Wolfsfrau. So women who run with wolves, and we call it the wolf woman in uh, German. Then we have DJ Conway's Wicca, The Complete Craft, which was quite um, a cheap, oops, a cheap thing to get. I get to get it for three, four dollars or something, second hand. I quite like that book. Uh, for some reason, it's a good beginner's book, but sometimes I don't necessarily like the tone of it because sometimes there are standing things like every real witch 
And I don't like that term, to be honest, because it suggests if you don't do that that way, you're not a real witch or something. So not every time I like that, but there are also other resources that are great to, to, um, yeah, to read and to remind yourself of and so on. Um, it's good to have at least, uh, it's good to have for that less money that I bought for that. This is also a book, which is a course book here. The Path of Druidry by Penny Billington. And I try to remember who recommended that book, that Druidry book. It was by, oh my gosh, she's also here on uh, YouTube. She's uh, mostly recommending here um, books um, that are about Druidry because she did the Obot um, course. I try to remember her um, and, and see if I can put it in there. Danny Lang, genau. Uh, I start to talk German again. Exactly. <laughs> uh, I guess it's Danny Lang um, from Esoteric Moments. Now I know it. I know her. Yeah, and her name on YouTube is Danny Lang, but uh, she calls also her show Esoteric Moments, and she recommended that book. And Penny Billington, and I started to listen to Penny Billington on. Um, uh, one of the Obot podcasts, and I was quite fascinated by her, and she has so much wisdom. I still have to work through that, because it's a workshop book, so to speak, a course book. And um, yeah, I should know it better. I always buy course books, and then I don't have the time to do them. Not necessarily the best way to do that. And yeah, so I try to see. This will be long, so you have to Take also your favorite beverage. Mine is uh, almost empty now. Um, what you also ha uh, have here, the following three books, were um, tips I got from my dear, dear teacher, Annie Greystone from Mirth and Reverence. She did um, a book recommendation um, series, you could call it series, I'm not sure, so couple of videos she did where she recommended books, uh, witchy books and non-witchy books, but books that could be interesting uh, for pagans and witches. And these were some of the spiritual ones, uh, more general, that not, not necessarily had to do anything with Wicca or something. Um, but I fell in love with them and I got them f uh, with my birthday money and um, quite fascinated by that one here, which Annie described as her something like a Bible when you want to get inspired spiritually for maybe writing something in your journal um, on, or your search for, we want to reflect on certain topics. You find quotes from every book that um, has to do something with or that have to do something with spirituality, with certain topics that are viewed from a, a spiritual perspective, so to speak. And um, you can see here, reading the sacred in everyday life. And it is great. And what's also great about it, all sorts of signs here and put in there, bookmarks. And what's also great about that, the light is slowly fading, sorry. Um, what's also great about that is um, you get some conversational journal entries, like this here for leisure. What childhood experiences with food have influenced uh, your present eating attitudes and habits what are your favorite foods are any foods taboo how do you determine which food best suits you and something like that then spiritual exercises create a blessing service for your stove refrigerator toaster bowls pans dishes and cooking uh, cutlery i'm not quite sure how that word is pronounced uh, acknowledge their uh, co-creator role in the preparation of meals in your home and I adore that. This is full of inspiration. Also for those of you who are writing blogs. Because sometimes, yeah, sometimes you don't have any ideas what to write next. And this is a good starter for that. And also a good starter for everything else spiritual in your life. There is a following book to that. That is quite similar. It's also by Frederick and Anne Ma uh, Mary Anne Broussard. And like it's spiritual Rx. I have to say I wasn't aware of what was Rx, what that was meaning until I looked it up. But um, I like that. Prescriptions for living a meaningful life. 
And this is basically similar to that, but um, it starts with what you can do in the morning, prayer some mantras, what you can watch, art and music. Um, and it's, it's basically similar to the, uh, to the other one, imaginary, uh, Im imaginary exercises, ah, and so on and so forth. Journal and exercises and so on. Um, I still have to find my way through it because sometimes you buy simply too many books <laughs> and can you can't keep up with them. And uh, yeah, another one here is The Dark Goddess. I'm quite into the uh, female spirituality movement this year and also uh, with the studies for The, uh, the Dark Goddess and um, um, also with our... Um, with our challenge that we had, I also wanted to study more more goddesses, and this is a great, great dark goddess book, Dancing with the Shadow, by Marcia Stark and Guinea Stern. Guinea Stern. And this um, has certain um, goddesses uh, in there that are de de depicted, ne necessarily depicted in words, sometimes also in images. So we have here, we have Lilith, Inanna, Pele, Medusa. So a couple of goddesses, not, not many, but a couple of them. And you get a bit of background, background of Lilith and an invocation for Lilith. You get, no, the lighting get, really gets bad. Um, yeah, so you get basically a lot of that still, although it is a... Um, a relatively thin book or a small book uh, and how to integrate the shadow, something like that, a little bit here. And um, rituals, working with Lilith, you get this, uh, these things and also, yeah, even more. So it's, um, it's a great, great little book and I got it also for a couple of bucks. Uh, I'm really into thrift shopping <laughs> books, actually actually um yeah other books um one of the great finds this year this was really like winning the lottery or something or finding the whole grail of uh, witchy witchy uh, spiritual books was this one ariadne's threat by shekina mountain water a workbook of goddess magic and Everyone who is a bit longer into the spirituality movement will know Shekinah Mountain Water because she was one of the really main voices of spirituality movement in uh, in the U.S. And she died, I guess, 2000, I'm not quite sure, 2006 or nine. I'm not sure, uh, of cancer. She died of cancer and um, it's very sad. And But this book is really hard to come by. Um, I came across the this book through another one through this one here the woman runes the woman runes by molly rima and shekina mountain water indirectly shekina mountain water because um the woman runes were invented by shekina mountain water and um uh are briefly discussed in that book but molly rima from uh, bridget's grove um also on instagram she wanted more out of the runes and so she created um more meanings around them um and um well it's it's a wonderful thing and you can get the deck also the thing is um it was too expensive for me the book was i was able to f get on amazon but um well yeah it was uh it was too uh too much shipping cost for the deck alone and i said okay well uh just the book for at first but what i found out was that you whoop, that in the back of the book you um are also encouraged to do your own make how to make your own woman runes oh and um you can do them on clay or extra paper and i actually did them and i don't know where i put them actually I had them here <laughs> and now they're gone. I put them on, uh, yeah, um, I have a rounder, not, not a rounder cutter, but um, a circle cutter 
and I cut it uh, circles and uh, drew the the runes on them and uh, made a little bit made them look a little bit more fancy and um, yeah I have it in a tin but for some ah haha there it is there is the tin and um, this is my room, woman women runes or woman runes woman runes and um, yeah this is what I've created with the with the deck and uh, f from the runes and the book is uh, basically uh, like the guidebook and it's really a good deck I quite like it it's quite on point and also quite nourishing and um, yeah but this one here that is the base for um, you could say for the woman runes is the base for the woman runes is a year and a day study so this is really um you can do that alone you can do that in a group and um you also get like here for each of the sections you get explorations suggested projects and so on questions to ponder resources even more goddess books to to delve into sometimes you find also these cards and some of the images were quite familiar to me um, and I knew that uh, she was also one of the initiators of the Daughters of the Moon tarot um, which is a total different story I have a very conflicted uh, relationship with that deck that had mostly to do with the one of the creators of the deck that is um, I try to remember her name uh, Fiona Morgan and I had not very nice um, um, experiences with her um, relating uh, getting her guidebook, which was really uh, something went wrong, let's say it like this. And I tried to contact her and she was not I was not able to get her by email. I was not able to get her by Facebook and um, it simply wasn't possible. And I had to get uh, paypal into that and only then i got a reply and the reply was you can call me by phone or phone numbers everywhere on our page and i said already in the in my other emails that i'm from germany that this is not possible and whatever the thing that happened i got my money back from paypal because they said i was right and um i was really it was not the best way to deal because uh she was all doubting what was happening and I could prove clear evidence that something went wrong and that it wasn't my fault. But um, there was only denying on the other side. So this was really something that I didn't like. But nonetheless, this book is a great book. And for all of you who think now, oh my gosh, this book is so expensive when you get it now because it's out of print. Fear not because uh, the daughter of... Um, Shekina Mountain Water is preparing to bring it out as Kindle ebook. Um, she's still in the process of um, getting the format right for the Kindle ebook. She, a couple of months ago, she searched for someone, uh, um, yeah, helping her with uh, formatting uh, a Word doc format into a Kindle format because that's not so easy. Uh, I'm not sure if she found someone. Uh, she made a call on on on, on Facebook uh, and, and searched for some help, but it's it's in the making, so to speak. And I hope this will come back because it's a great way to delve into uh, into being a, a female witch, into being a goddess worship type of woman. <laughs> it's a great way to 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 start, and I hope to do that in. Um, in 2018 maybe with a friend i'm not quite sure if i find the time <laughs> so i guess my camera will die out soon so i get i will make a little break and come back with that one or oh, i told you about that already this was the 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 workbook um not the workbook the mother piece uh larger mother piece uh companion book so to speak but you get a lot of uh, information on each of the it's also the german one on each of the major arcana cards and if you struggle with the deck alone and only have the little white book i recommend get this book if you don't aren't offended by her art style or something like that you uh, like it enough but uh, can't make sense to something 
get that book, get that book, get that book. It's so worth reading cover to cover alone, um, but uh, it will help you deepen your, your understanding of that deck. So for the rest of the tour, I will uh, come in front of the camera because otherwise the light is too bad for some reason because I'm standing, there is a <laughs> bookshelf because I'm standing uh, in front of the light, so to speak, so blocking the light. I thought uh, I will share some of the other books with you. Like I said, this one must have if, you, um, if you're working with the Mother Peace Tarot. Definitely uh, worth... Uh, getting i was quite happy to get it for also just a couple of bucks because uh the german version of the mother piece is no longer in print i try to remember did i get the german version where is it i get it i guess i got the yeah i got the german uh edition for really also a low price I'm quite happy to get that is it the german version yeah it's the german version that i got and um i'm quite happy maybe i will at one point maybe get the 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 tiny one the small um mother piece tarot in english but at the moment i'm quite happy with that but this one absolutely a thing to fetch it's now i have to find a way to get it back in uh, please fit in there so another one uh, that is um, for a tarot deck, actually, and I don't know. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I promised long ago to make um, a bit more uh, uh, yeah, in-depth review of this book uh, for Margaret Peterson, for the Margaret Peterson Tarot. But um, didn't have the time, and I also want to translate uh, at least one or two of the texts so you get an impression of that, because it's not only available in English. In, in German and uh, what's really great about that is um, that you have large large images of the cards in it and it's a tiny bit like a guidebook a tiny bit um, but um, also um, it goes more more into into poetry for some degree some of the poetry are Hard to come by. I have to say the poetry that you read for each of the card meanings, uh, each of the cards in the little white book that accompanies the deck is easier to understand, easier to grasp. This one, sometimes you think, okay, the author has some things in her mind for the images and what she feels about, but it doesn't come not necessarily across what what's in her mind so you can't necessarily uh, grasp it so to speak but um still it's worth it and um so here for the world she has um also a poem something like breathe in uh pulsate breathe out and something like that i'm not sure i guess uh annika from nobody's here ask particularly i guess it was the two of earth or something where it is two of two of earth okay two of coins or something like that yeah it was that here and i really i adore that the images are so big back and forth it is called and I'm not so good sometimes with translating it one on one. With the soles of our feet, we touch the surface of the earth. The way where it should begin, if not with our feet or something like that. Little circle movements, we make little circle movement and feel how the weight of our body is put on our feet or something. It's, uh, so I would need certainly more time to do them justice <laughs> so to speak and um it's a great book still i haven't really worked much with the deck i have recently uh i've recently seen um the german edition of the margaret peterson tarot and in the german edition you have some dark purpley borders around the cards or around the images and for some reason that spoke to me more than 
the grayish border or something. I have always thought back and forth if I should trim them or not because they are so big, but I haven't trimmed them. Uh, but I don't want to um, part from the deck because uh, I know this has some role to play at some point. So now I have to find my way back into that. There's also more books about jewelry. Also one of the recommendations, this one by Philip Cargom, Druid Mysteries. Still have to read it whole through. I guess it will be uh, when a Druidry is more calling to me. Um, but uh, this was also a recommendation by Danny Lang. So how to start uh, uh, with Druidry, or should I say how to get an impression of Druidry. And this was one of her recommendations that she said. It's a good beginner's book, good overview of Druidry. And Philip Cargom, you will know him from uh, the Tarot decks, um, uh, from the uh, Druidcraft Tarot deck, and also from... I'm not sure from the Orc, no, Philip Cargom was he? No, it, he was not from the Wildwood, but um, Philip Cargom was also part of the other Will Worthington's Oracle decks, the plant, the Druid plant and the Druid uh, animal Oracle. Another one that is uh, by Druid is by Nimue Brown, Spirituality Without Structure. This is a book that I, or the author, I came across um, also on a pagan YouTube channel. I'm not sure how she's called now, and I can't remember her name at the moment. Or she, though she's uh, quite uh, quite known in the, in the um, pagan uh, YouTube world, but uh, she had an interview with this author um, on her YouTube channel, and I started to get this book, and it's a really great book. Why it's why it's a view on why the whys of a. Um, path that is of your own making and uh, it's a great reassurance if you are considering doing that and she also goes a bit into why the dogmatic way is not necessarily the way that she is uh, following and why she thinks that it has to be personal um, especially spirituality and there are more books by her that I want to get at some point um, especially this when pagans prayer and uh, there was another one, something about dreaming and so on, dream work from a Druid perspective, which was also quite fascinating. She's a great author. So, um, there are some more German books uh, there. Also here, something, this is quite a great book cover. The, the Wild Woman Myths and uh, Stories. Um, um, about women through uh, the world and so on. And so you get uh, stories from uh, the Aborigines, from you get from Mexico, from First Nations uh, um, people, from Colombia and from Inuit and so on. Um, also something from, I guess I try to see, it's also from... Uh, uh, from Germany, there are some also from Austria. China. Um, this is like a myth, a uh, collection of myths, of myths where, where women are in the center of it. And um, yeah, you get uh, water women, witches, women from the sky, and so on. Uh, uh, stories from the other world, so to speak, also. And um, I found this in our uh, public bookshelf uh, and thought, okay, thought, okay it's mine has to come with me. Um, another book. This is also a great book. Sadly, only available in German. And I like these books because they are so big. So this is Trees and their healing powers and the healing powers of the forest. And this is by Adelheid Ling. So those of you who are uh, German speaking, this is um, the title. And it's by Cosmos. And um, alone for the images, you say, alone for the images. And you get a lot of this, uh, you also got here, the Ogum, or the Ogum, I'm not quite sure. I don't think you speak the the um, uh, the G in the, in the word. Look at that tree. Isn't that like a master of the wood or something? So 
It's um, and also a little bit of her drawings here, which I really like. Got the Yggdrasil. I am the tree that carries all the words. The words, not the words, the words. Uh, who gives lives, gives and takes. Who's rooted and yet carries you through spaces. A being of all times or something like that. So it's... Um, you get a bit about uh, trees in general, about how she sees trees uh, as beings of light and of fire, actually, and her spiritual way, spiritual way of seeing trees, actually. And um, then she goes later. She goes really into um, into each of the trees, like here the maple we call Ahorn. And she gives um, meanings for the trees, uh, sort of metaphysical meanings of the trees, and also what you can can uh, create from the trees, and um, yeah, as medicine, so to speak, and um, uh, how it's working on the soul and the spirit, and really a great, great book. When to collect uh, uh, certain uh, gifts from the trees, like uh, when to collect the buds, the flowers. Um, the roots and so on when's the best time for that and what you can create from them this is all also uh, she incorporates that also in her in her book and um, she certainly is into the into the north mythology thing so the different worlds in the world tree she's incorporated here in this image she was drawing it's a wonderful wonderful book and Another book that is quite large and heavy, and I tried to find it without. Uh, yeah. The, this is a book that is available in English, but not in this edition. <laughs> uh, we get it also in a smaller pocket book edition or something, so uh, soft cover edition. But this one is by Peter Wohleben, and I'm not quite sure how you uh, translate the. how they translated the, um, the English. Um, English title of that book so we would say the secret life of trees or something and there is um, he brought a uh, this book is published in English and he is a ranger um, should I say he was a ranger he retired because he yeah his health was not was not the best because of all the thing, things he tried to multitask he tried to be ranger book writer and uh also a teacher about plants and, and, and the forest in general. He's a ranger and he comes from a perspective that is not necessarily typical spiritual. So where the other author that I was sharing with you, the woman about the, the trees, wrote certainly from a spiritual perspective, he brings a more grounded perspective to it, more uh, the perspective of a ranger, but a ranger who has... Um, evolved past the um the usual things that rangers do so he is definitely sometimes not um, okay with things that um uh, rangers should do to trees or something so this is something he don't likes and he but he recognizes uh, trees as beings and he talks about the world wood web so to speak um how they are connected uh, how the trees are connected especially when the trees from one family so like beaches for instance and uh he started to um uh, delve into that and this book is um was a gift i got last year and um it gives you fabulous fabulous images macro images you could say of of trees and sometimes also something like that here look at that is that this is so amazing so so amazing and um he brought out a lot of books recently so there's also look at that look at that so fungi tree fungi um he also brought out recently uh, a manual for the forest which is quite entertaining to read 
And um, there's also a book about animals that he um, brought out here in Germany, which will be also published in uh, in uh, English. Uh, that's uh, I have already heard and um, definitely uh, would say read them. They're worth reading, worth reading. And you learn so much more. Some of the things now um, f I find quite interesting when I read certain books books for different uh, authors and find they're agreeing on something although they're coming from different paths or different backgrounds and this is whoops this is definitely something oh my gosh look at that sorry this is always oh my gosh look at that look at that isn't that so fitting for the season <sighs> winter we only have a tiny bit of snow here but not enough to cover everything in white um Look at that. This is really the frost phase are are really artists. Look at that. You can smell the winter air, really. And this is if you hear some kind of strange mm, in the background, this is my dog snoring. This is her way of snoring now that she's an old lady. <laughs> um yeah. This is what I mean if you hear that at all. <laughs> I'm not quite sure. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Oh, cutie. Mm, owl alert. Mm. So, definitely a wonderful, a wonderful uh, book. And also, he recommends the way of when you do uh, maintaining a forest, doing it with these, with the horses in the old kind of way cause the big big machines that you're using he calls them harvester they are so harsh to the forest wood that um this machine destroys the wood into meters and meters of earth of soil so it's so compromised that this uh, soil can't um keep the water anymore the water stands on the surface so the forest is wet on the surface but no water gets into the ground and from what he said is the only way to get that the original state back is when we get permafrost and when we get an ice age a new ice age so well this is the thing that we do to our earth uh, and uh, that will take ages, ages and ages until it is redone or undone, so to speak. I try to find a place here to put it back later. So um, there's one book. Try to find. A... No, I don't have it here at the moment. Um, that is on top of. Um, maybe I will get or fetch it. Um, here's a book I want to share with you. This is not necessarily spiritual, but will be um, also fitting for the, the spiritual people that are in the spiritual movement. This is the Great Council. I get it. I guess it's, uh, it has a different title. It's just the Way of Council. It's originally in English. Um, it's by Jack Zimmerman and Virginia Coyle and how to do the art of council so sitting in the council and how to do that and these authors brought back this um way of counseling and they um are directors of the and now i try to pronounce that correctly i'm sorry if i don't do that the ojai foundation in i guess it's in california and they brought back this council idea brought it back to um companies to schools to prisons even and how to find one voice when you're so many and how to do that in council. And this is something we also doing in Egon's Villa, in the transition town movement, at least in the a facility of Egon's Villa. Not necessarily is this a, a, a thing that is going on in the transi tra transition town movement, but I'm sure that would be fitting for other uh, uh, circumstances because it's a good way to um, find... Um, um, a consensus, consensus or something. I don't know if this uh, is the right word for it. To come to a to a conclusion that is uh, that feels right for everyone. So this is not necessary where everyone, uh, where one person should be right or the most persons should be right, 
uh, but we agree on something where um, something is not as bad, some opinion or some decision is not so bad from the one that you wanted to push through, maybe. So uh, something that everyone can live with. And uh, the way that it's done is also that um, really it is, um, the idea is of course taken from First Nations. And what you have there when you sit in council is you have a talking device or a talking stick. Um, stone, you could take anything. You have a center, um, you create a center. Sometimes you have a fire maybe like these, I'm not sure there's not a fire, but a stone. You can create a center. You can make some kind of centerpiece altar space or something where everyone contribu uh, contributes something to it and then you sit around it and um, you have this talking piece uh, or talking stick that you give around and only the one who is talking uh, or only the one who's holding the stick or the talking piece or something can talk or is allowed to talk and everyone else has to listen and let me tell you in our society that is the fucking hardest <laughs> way to learn because uh, we are so um, we're so into this uh, I want to say my opinion quick 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 it's mine it's more important than yours and if I don't get it out quickly then it's more I don't know then I'm exploding or something <laughs> this is really something hard to really slow down to listen with your heart this is something listening on a heart level that this book is also uh, proclaiming Uh, listen with your heart and listen what what is behind some of the things the person is saying. Maybe you, someone is saying something and your first reaction is, whoa, this gay or this woman is crazy or something. But when you listen with your heart, you hear what's behind that. So are there any fears or something? Why she's talking the way she's talking or from which perspective she's coming from which background she's coming and this is something you really have to learn and it is not easy we are doing in, in egon's villa we are doing it more or less by ourselves not with the kind of teaching or something i know even in germany you can now learn the way of the council and in america you can do this also i know that uh, joanna paul corbett the creator of the guy and tarot does this also in her guy and retreats And it's certainly um, certainly a way, a way to communicate, a way to come together and a way to find, um, find a voice together that is definitely um, better than the ways that uh, most councils or most talking or discussions are, um, yeah, um, are running. So one of the books that I definitely recommend. So the last book I wanted to share with you, and the sad thing is, um, this is not available in English again. Um, still, I think maybe some of you who speak German, maybe this will uh, inspire you to speak German or to, to learn German or something, is um, by Sonja Sacher. And Sonja Sacher is the lady who did the incense calendar I'm, uh, I told you about uh, in the last video. And she is a gorgeous soul on Instagram called Die Kräuterwerkstatt. And I put in the link from the shop uh, in my la last video. And um, she wrote this book. This is about healing plants, about uh, uh, soul comforts uh, and the world beyond the visible. So plant. she has really a gift to understand and communicate with uh, the plants on a soul level. She's gone through really some awful, horrible and terrible stuff in her life. And she's also talking about that in that book. So you have this book um, is um, parted in, into the um, things that um, uh, into, uh, yeah, into the plants, into the section where you get more information about the plants, about how to use them in medicine what their soul uh, meaning is, what their soul, um, soul medicine is, so to speak. And you get about a bit uh, in other parts of the, um, the book, you get uh, more information about her life and what she's been through and why she has this knowledge about plants that she has now. And um, 
it's a great book. You learn so much from it. She also has drawn some of the plants and um, she also made um, an oracle deck from it. So I should say mainly handmade deck. Uh, the one that I got is uh, some kind of easy laminated deck. So not the typical kind of uh, oracle deck cardstock that you will get some more something that you handmade that you could handmade but nowadays she has a different edition and i'm quite sure i will get that as well um because also uh this deck is is great and the book is great and the knowledge that she has is really great she's a kind and gorgeous soul and um um gives you really so much about the plants and i wish there would be someone who translate that in um in english because i'm quite sure uh there would be a lot of people out there in english uh uh, English speaking people who would love to read that and and uh, learn about her her wisdom also got a little note here from her in that book when I bought it I got it last year around late summer or something and it was really a great book to learn you get some recipes um, you learn uh, about the different plants, about uh, nettle, about uh, yarrow and so on, what their uh, meaning is, what also what their um, usage was in the old folk medicine and so on, what their beliefs were, were around the plant in old folk medicine. Great, great book. And really, I no, now will, a lot of you will uh, say, now, why do you uh, share that when we still can't read them? Learn German! That's the way you can read that! <laughs> I know, I know. Um, it's um, Sometimes I'm quite lucky that, um, yeah, that there is kind of an um, inspiration is the wrong word. Um, there is some motivation, I should say, motivation to learn English because there are all the great books, spiritual books out there that mostly are in English. And um, But maybe it's um, when you're speaking English, you don't not necessarily, or when you come from an English-speaking country, you don't, you don't not, uh, have to necessarily learn another language because you're fine with, except you're uh, passionate about language or something. But maybe books like this could. <laughs> I know German is not an easy language. Uh, uh, and that's, uh, that's for sure. And it's also not the, the most well-sounding language sometimes. We can sound very nice. I have uh, got a compliment from my dear friend Emily lately that I have a soothing voice when, I, when I'm speaking German found that very flattering <laughs> um but sometimes it's not not sometimes it can be a harsh language but i maybe you can get that or you can do that with any language when you have the wrong kind of speaker so to say um yeah um i i recently had uh had heard something i watched the 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 whole hobbit trilogy again and i have these special editions and I heard in the extras, uh, the making ofs and so on. I don't know. They were talking, uh, Peter Jackson was talking uh, about the black language. And so this is only for talking nerds. The black language that, uh, uh, the black speech that is, talk, uh, is spoken only by uh, orcs and something like that. And goblins. And then in, in the same chapter he's saying i can't uh think that uh anyone could say romantic stuff in german can't possibly imagine that and i said thank you peter thank you very much <laughs> but anyway so this was my book tour this was i'm quite sure epic long but you can take it in in bits and pieces make it slow if you don't want to watch it at all I know it's too late now to say that, but um, yeah, um, still, I hope it was some kind of uh, fun to watch it. And maybe I will share with you other books that I have here. There are tons of more and I see even more plant books and bar and whatnot and uh, tarot books. Although I haven't got any new tarot books, I guess I don't have got, got, uh, gotten any new books. 
on tarot this year more decks than books so i wish you all the best we will see us in the next video uh maybe tomorrow maybe the day after we will see uh how i find the time and yeah until next time bye